Do you have a mom over the age of 60? If so, you better listen up. Urinary tract infections or UTIs are quite common and more common as we age. Medscape reports that approximately 25 to 40 percent of women in the United States aged 20 to 40 years old have had a UTI. UTIs also count for over 6 million patient visits per year. 20 percent of those are to the emergency department. Symptoms can be subtle like joint pain, irritability, bloating, and just generally not feeling well. If the infection goes on long enough, unnoticed, it can turn into sepsis, which is deadly. I'm going to discuss five tips on how to avoid a UTI and help your parents avoid a UTI and a visit to the ED. I will also discuss some very exciting research for a UTI vaccine. Yes, you heard me, a UTI vaccine. Never done before. Hi, Chris here, registered nurse, certified clinical nurse leader with my focus being research. Happy to talk about this topic today because it affects me personally. And I hope what I'm about to share, you can learn from what I've gone through and hopefully not experience what I have. As a nurse in a large hospital and with a mom who's in her 80s, I know all too well how common UTIs can be and how dangerous they are if left untreated. From slight symptoms of burning when urinating, fatigue, discomfort, a UTI can turn into urosepsis and be deadly, and you never know when or if that will happen. Three years ago, my family and I were in Hawaii with my mom. Little did we know that my mom had the beginnings of a UTI. The symptoms were subtle, basically just a general feeling of unwell. She did not think much of it at the time. Fortunately, my wife, a wonderful nurse, astute observer, noticed and began her physical assessment. It did not take her long to realize my mom needed to go to the urgent care and get on some antibiotics. The scary part about this is my mom, left to her own devices, might not have ever realized she had a UTI until maybe it was too late. UTIs in women over 60 is quite common and once you get one, the odds of getting another go up a lot. So much so that she is now has a standing order for a urinalysis. Anytime she feels the slightest symptom, she can go get her urine checked. So why is this so common? First, probably the most direct reason, anatomically, women have a shorter urethra than men. Women get UTIs up to 30 times more often than men do. Also, as many as 4 in 10 women who get a UTI will get at least one more within 6 months. In addition, the external urethra in women is mostly mucosa, moist tissue lining the vagina. The skin is thinner and more sensitive than most of the skin on the body. As a result, it is easier to traumatize and irritate, which creates an environment for bacteria to potentially live and grow before climbing the short distance up the urethra to the bladder. In addition, the female urethra is located closer to the rectum, which carries waste and bacteria such as E. coli. E. coli is the number one cause of bladder infections. In fact, it contributes to 90% of diagnosed UTIs. The anatomy of women also makes them more prone to getting UTIs after sex, which can allow bacteria near the vagina to get into the urethra. Also, women going through menopause and have already gone through it are more susceptible because estrogen levels drop, vaginal tissues become thinner, and becomes more prone to infection. Specific types of contraceptions, like using per spermicide or a diaphragm, and in contrast to stopping pregnancy, actual pregnancy can also leave women more prone to UTIs. So all of this, you can see why UTIs are so common in women and something to be on the lookout for, right? Okay, so what are the symptoms we are looking out for? Symptoms include a need to pee more often than usual, pain or discomfort when peeing, sudden urges to pee, feeling as though you're unable to empty your bladder fully, pain low down in your tummy, urine that's cloudy, foul smelling, feeling generally unwell, achy, and tired. All right, listen up. The following symptoms require immediate medical attention. If you have a high temperature or feel hot and shivery, or if you have a low temperature below 36 degrees Celsius, you are confused or drowsy, you have pain in the lower tummy or in the back, just under the ribs, or you can see blood in your pee. These are all very serious signs that you are or could be becoming septic, and the treatment is needed right away. Let's talk about how we stop this from happening altogether. What are these tips that I mentioned we would talk about? Number one. And this might seem obvious, but often one of the hardest things to do for older folks, drink plenty of fluids, especially water. This keeps the bladder tissue hydrated and healthy. It also dilutes your urine and lowers the concentration of bacteria in the bladder. Some people can clear an infection on their own by just drinking fluids. Try drinking at least 50 ounces or 1.5 liters of fluid daily to prevent infections. I know my mom tends to not drink a lot of water because she doesn't want to get up at night and pee. 
I don't like to wake up and pee at night either. But the alternative, a UTI, is far worse than having to pee a few times at night. Number two, empty your bladder often, which ensures urine is not sitting in your bladder for long periods of time. Bacteria like warm and wet environments to grow. They thrive in this kind of place. Take that away from them by urinating often. Typically four to eight times a day is frequent enough. Number three, be sure to urinate after sex because the act of intercourse can cause bacteria to get close to or even in the urethra. Voiding after sex removes some of the bacteria before it can cause an infection. Number four, take cranberry supplements. Even though research has not shown definitively that it prevents UTIs, there is a reasonable biological mechanism to consider. Cranberries contain a substance called A-type proanthocyanidins, or PACs, and they basically prevent bacteria from sticking to the bladder wall. Finally, five, something we were all taught when we were first getting potty trained, at least I hope we were, wipe front to back. Anatomically, as I mentioned, the rectum is quite close to the vagina. And considering our rectums do house bacteria like E. coli, which is the number one offender for UTIs, it only makes sense to be sure we perform our pooping ritual as cleanly as possible, front to back. On to the coolest piece of information in this entire video, what I love the most, the research. The trial I'm going to mention is ongoing, so I do not have any efficacy data to share. The study comes from a company called Janssen, which is part of the Johnson & Johnson company. The title of the study is a study of vaccination with nine valent extraintestinal pathogenic Escherichia coli vaccine EXPEC9V in the prevention of invasive extraintestinal pathogenic Escherichia coli disease in adults aged 60 years and older with a history of urinary tract infection in this past two years. That was a mouthful. The investigational product is a biologic, so not your typical live or dead virus that we are used to when we get the flu vaccine. Participants will receive a single intramuscular injection of the 9-valent extraintestinal pathogenic Escherichia coli vaccine, EXPEC9V, on day one. The primary outcome will be measuring how many participants contract a UTI post-vaccination over a six-year period. Since we have statistics on how often we see infections, especially with those folks who have had previous infections, the study design should provide good results and conclusive evidence as to whether the biological vaccine for UTIs will work. This is a placebo-controlled study, which is the gold standard in terms of determining whether a treatment is effective. More information about the study can be found on clinicaltrials.gov, which is available to the public. I encourage you to check it out. Well, well, I hope that you found this information useful. If you have a mom over the age of 60, odds are she will have a UTI at some point. And if you are prepared to know not only how to help her prevent it from the beginning, but also symptomatically how it presents, you can help her avoid potential emergent situations. Simple tips and tactics like I described in this video can help her maintain good health and stay out of the hospital. Thanks again for stopping by, Nurse Chris. Out.